All right, so we took a look at two wired keyboards for the Switch in a previous video, and after I did that one, a lot of people sent me messages and left comments saying, hey, there's actually a pretty good keyboard you can check out, and it's pretty much everything you were asking for in that video, minus, I guess, one thing, uh, but, it is a wireless keyboard and it actually connects to the Joy-Con controllers and it doesn't necessarily have to run a cable to the Switch and it's a bit more, uh, I guess, comfortable to use. So I went ahead and picked it up and it's actually about the same price as those other keyboards I was checking out. So it's roughly $25 to $26, so right in uh, in that range. And that's the Dobe Wireless Joy-Con keyboard. So it will actually hook up to your Joy-Con controllers and give you essentially what reminds me of that chat pad. That's actually what I was asking for in that video was a chat pad similar to what we see with like the 360, how that had one, or the Xbox One controller now, which has one. And I was excited to check this out. So that's what we're actually gonna do here. We're gonna open it up, unbox it. And because it's like wireless, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, unscrew it and check it out inside as well. Just see if there's anything crazy going on. So quick unboxing. It is, as you can see, this like square, and then it has two little so uh, slots on each side. And those are actually for the grips. So your hands actually get a nice grip on those Joy-Con controllers when it's actually set up there and it does have little indicators at the top. It's pretty basic. There's not obviously a lot that has to be said on this box. So we can actually go ahead and open uh, open this guy up. So here we go, we're in, it does have a quick manual to kind of go through, but to be honest, there's not a lot that you have to know about this thing to use it. It's, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward as you would assume. So inside it does come with a cable to charge it, which by the way, USB-C, Thank you. All accessories, just USB-C. We don't need micro USB anymore. We're, we're good this way, okay? It's, ever since the Switch went with USB-C, I really dislike seeing uh, micro or mini USB all the time with some accessories, especially if they're for the Switch. If they're for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, I get it, that's what they use, but still, USB-C, go that route. It has like this little bag here, and then it also has, this one got away from it, but it actually has a USB uh, connector that plugs into the dock. It's like one of those little, little, tiny little guys that plugs into the side. So it's fairly discreet, but it's also small enough to where you could lose it, I guess. So keep that in mind. That's, that's one issue is it's fairly small, but some people probably prefer this since you'll probably put it onto the dock and then you won't really ever think about it again unless you need that USB port. Otherwise, it actually hides fairly well on the side of the dock. Now, looking at the actual keyboard here. It's very much uh, like a tiny, like a smaller rubberized keyboard. So all the keys are rubber, which is good for gripping. And the travel on them isn't great. It's like a cell phone, how we used to have keyboards back in the day for our cell phone, whether they were like flip open or they would like flip out or something. You can kind of hear it maybe. So it's, it's not a great travel. It's not a keyboard travel. This is a keypad essentially. Uh, the okay and return feel like two buttons. <laughs> the space bar feels like 20. <laughs> uh, but otherwise it's fairly responsive and it does pop up pretty quickly. So I do at least like that. And if you have the Joy-Con controllers on there, it's pretty easy for your thumbs to reach. So actually let me go ahead and grab a pair of Joy-Con controllers here. And if we go ahead and pop these guys in, it does kind of complete like the, the shape of it, right? And it actually looks pretty good. This looks fairly stock, I would say. The only thing that's really weird about this, and I, it'd be cool if they did something with it, is this very large blank space right here. Now, I know that's there obviously for uh, symmetry and to probably give it uh, a bit more, I would say, just make it sturdier, right? Uh, but, I feel like there's this large area here that's just going to waste. Even if you just put your logo here, I guess. I, they can't put Nintendo's logo, obviously, because the third party accessory is not licensed, but something, I mean, anything here. It doesn't have to be crazy. I'm not even asking for like a little screen or anything like that. Just something, I don't know. It's uh, It just feels like a wasted space right here. But otherwise, with those on it, it feels pretty good. See, on the back, there are actually these grips they are hollow plastic, but once the Joy-Con is on, it feels like, it feels pretty good. It's like a good spot actually to put your hand and grip the Joy-Con. So some people actually might like this just for the grip. Like I actually, this is gonna sound funny. I like this 
more than the Nintendo grip, essentially, because I actually like these grips a little more. They have like these little little divots on there. It's actually not bad. I'm, I'm a little surprised. Uh, I see why a lot of people were talking about this one in particular. Uh, anyway, it connects, and when it does, you'll get, obviously, your light indicators here. And you are then able to use this on uh, search bars. So for example, if you are on the eShop and you wanna type in whatever you're searching for, that you would do it right through here. Uh, it does not seem to work in the menu that I was able to see. So I basically would go to it like normal here, pick it, and then once I press A, rather than have to kind of cycle around with the joystick in A, I would just then just kind of reach over, type it out, and then go back to playing. Uh, so anytime it will call for a text input, this will work. So if you're in a game and you want to name a character, if you're in a game and you want to type something out to someone, which might be fairly useful now that something like uh, DCUO or DC Universe Online is actually coming over, I think I could actually get some use out of this while, while playing that, just because of the, the fact that it'd be easy to type stuff out. It worked well with... Uh, other devices back in the day with like the chat pad for sending messages on the Xbox 360. So I think this is this is actually a pretty cool device that has some use and at $25 compared to the other ones that I tested, it's not too bad. It has its own built-in battery and you do have USB-C at the top. On the back you have an on off switch here that turns it on and off. And then you have a sync button here that you press and hold and it will then sync up to this little guy here. And from what I can tell, you only have to do that once. Afterwards, whenever you turn it on, it will automatically sync up uh, and it'll work fine. So we can go ahead and take this apart now. It does say 2.4 gigahertz for the wireless frequency protocol. And then it does have a 200 milliamp hour battery. I don't think it needs a lot of power to do what it's doing. So I think that's probably okay for a decent, uh, decent charge. And it does have an 8 to 10 meter range, which is about right, you know, up to like 30 feet or so. So there you go. Uh, only a couple of Phillips head screws here. We do have uh, one of those nice warranty stickers that they like to put on all of these things. And actually, we'll be in pretty quickly. They also decided to put some clips around the outside as well. So it clips together really nicely to hold it. And what's interesting about this is it does appear to have uh, some communication, as you can see here to the Joy-Con. It seems to just run like a power negative or a positive negative for power there. So it maybe it does pull power or something from the Joy-Con. I didn't notice that when I was using it, but maybe I'll, I'll double check. However, it does appear to at least have some sort of communication uh, to the Joy-Con itself. So these are just power it looks like for the positive negative going up to here. So either it can actually use power from the Joy-Con or it can then charge it. This has no business charging these though because the, the battery here is fairly small. And that's probably the one disappointing thing from this. Look how much room is in here. They could have put a bigger battery in here and obviously got more time out of this. Uh, I haven't tested it long enough to see how long this will last. I don't think it's gonna last more than say four or five hours, but they obviously have plenty of space here. I also wanna point out that the, the antenna is actually on the bottom as you see here. It's a fairly large antenna too that's actually part of the board, but it is very nicely out of the way. It's all the way here at the bottom right and you would never really cover it or do anything to kind of get in the way of it or interfere. So that's actually a pretty good idea and a good spot to put it. And it does, like I said, get, uh, as, as they say, about 30 feet or so in terms of range. Otherwise though, it's a pretty straightforward internal with just the battery being uh, comically small for the amount of space that they have here. Um, I'm not sure if they would ever think about doing a bigger battery in there because while I think four or five hours is probably enough for most people, I'm sure there are gonna be some who test the limits with like an MMO that comes out uh, and they're gonna be playing this for a while. I could see somebody actually burning through the battery here. Although I guess you could also use a uh, portable battery bank to recharge it. It's only 200 milliamp hours, so I doubt it would take very long to charge through like USB type C at the top here. Um, otherwise though, fairly well built. Maybe, here's the thing, uh, maybe a weight or two in here. It's very, very light, okay? It's extremely light. So that's not a terrible idea either. Just to kind of drop a weight maybe around this guy just to give it a little, little feeling of a uh, quality in there.
And that's gonna do it for the Dobe wireless keyboard for the Nintendo Switch. I have to say, it's it's actually pretty good. And for the same price as those wired ones that I showed off before that weren't very good and were basically just regular keyboards, this does add a, a pretty decent way to hold the Joy-Con controllers while you're using it with these nice grips. And it is wireless. It looks like there's some actual time put into this. Now, will the keypad hold up over the course of a year or two? That's the part I really can't tell you, unfortunately, is how durable the keypad is. But I can tell you the ones on the 360 keypad back in the day went through about three or four years of Halo for me. So if this is built at all similar to that, it should last for a year or two of heavy use. But again... We'll see, uh, but interesting, interesting keyboard that you guys suggested. I do like it more than the others. And with DC Universe Online coming up, I do see a good case there that people might start looking for keyboards to pick up for the Switch. There are some other ones you can play obviously now uh, on there, but I do see DCUO, uh, we have Warframe of course, but I see DCUO with kind of its superhero theme, really getting people looking at uh, keyboards and stuff once that comes out. So at least that makes sense. But let me know what you guys think about this down below uh, the wireless keyboard versus those wired ones that I had. Maybe you've already picked this up. Let me know how it's been working for you or maybe you're interested in it. Let me know about that as well. Thanks guys for watching. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you next time.